we have already seen like what were the biggest problems with the standalone databases and what is the mm, old or traditional solutions that were available the earlier solutions that were available to the problem was either you create a big database and kind of like uh, create multiple schemas into it but that also creates a problem because some applications they might need different database settings and because of which it it's not a viable solution next was to create multiple virtual machines but again inside the virtual machines you still have multiple sgas and pgas and the background processes hmm. so ultimately all the traditional solutions are not possible in order to consolidate an infrastructure and this is the reason oracle came up with something called as oracle multi tenant architecture hmm. in oracle multi tenant architecture it's something like this guys let's take you want to uh, ship some data from one place to another place or let us assume you want to ship some uh, material or goods from one place to another place so what you have is you have a driving engine so i'm kind of like uh, designing a train right now this is an engine uh, that will carry the user data right so this is how you i mean all the applications or the databases were designed so whenever we wanted to deliver something every time inside the multiple databases this is how things used to look like so multiple engines delivering multiple user data so some databases might be pretty big and some might be pretty small so this is how it used to work right now this common engine part this one if we can convert it into something like this why not have one big engine and then connect all the small containers to one big engine which knows how and where to deliver the products so earlier what used to happen was like when we install a standalone database uh, on multiple servers this is how we are running our configurations but in oracle multi tenant architecture this is how the configuration looks like so what we have is we have one engine that will drive or that will act as the one big oracle database and inside that oracle database you have like your hr database you have your sales database you have your sap database you have your finance database you have your travel or transport database and payroll so ultimately now if i speak about what is this engine this engine is the standard part in all the databases now what are those standard parts the standard parts inside a database is or multiple databases are sga and then of course instance and background processes but when it comes to table spaces your system and sysox of course temp and undo are also there but we are not taking them into consideration for now so these are like replicated multiple times right and this is the reason why not we create a big engine with a big sga with big system and then sys ox table spaces and then kind of like host multiple databases inside this big container mm -hmm. so this is how the idea of multi tenant architecture came into uh, existence now the beauty about this kind of architecture is see in this earlier architecture if you want to perform database upgrade we need to upgrade this database separately we need to upgrade this one we need to upgrade this one but in a multi tenant architecture if you just upgrade the main container database all the pluggable databases of course you will learn about these terms in some time all the databases that are attached to the big container they all will also automatically will get upgraded you don't need to upgrade each database separately that's the beauty about the multi tenant 
architecture. So that's a simple overview. Now you might have a question like, uh, okay, why, why is it that we are upgrading only this part and not upgrading these databases? In a multi-tenant architecture, if you see what we have done is, or technically what Oracle has done is they have uh, kind of like created a big system in Sysox uh, table spaces and in each base table that they have right base table in each base table that they have they have also introduced a new column called as container so which means every view that you had earlier even that exists inside the multi tenant architecture but now with a new column that is container like now when if you want to see the users inside the hr database then what you do is you query dba underscore users and then where container equal to hr and that's how you get the data don't worry we'll see about all that ultimately why oracle did or worked on something like this because you need to understand from the upgrade perspective there is an important point when you perform database upgrade what happens it will only upgrade your database binaries right so db binaries binaries are upgraded what is the meaning of db binaries it is the base tables and the performance views inside the system and sysox are upgraded which again means that in any upgrade of course user data will never be changed why would or who has authorized oracle to change user data oracle oracle is authorized to change the system sysox uh, create new performance views or introduce new base tables or have new columns inside the base tables that is well and good now any changes to the base tables reflect on these two main table spaces and that's the reason in a multi-tenant architecture the system in sysox is kind of a shared table space but not really you will understand in some time so the system the main binaries of the system in sysox across the container the big container that is being carried it is shared now in this case what happens is when you are trying to upgrade your job is just to upgrade the main system and sysox table spaces technically you are upgrading the main container and the other databases or the pluggable databases that are inside the main container database they will automatically upgrade because in each of these containers only user data exists so there is technically or at a high level you don't have system and sysox of course you do have and i'll explain you why but on a generic note you can make sure like all these containers the small databases they do not have their own main system and sysox table spaces which are responsible for database upgrades <clears throat> so this is a simple overview now let us jump into the architecture more in detail and then understand things from a different level. <clears throat>